I trust that the Lord has taken care of you, that you are keeping safe, and that the Lord has blessed you in every way. We have continued to pray for you, as we also pray for the nation in these very trying times. The Lord is gracious. We continue with um, our series, A Journey Through the Book of Philippians. And um, just to remind you, our series title is, This is Joy. <clears throat> That's our series title, This is Joy. And today's topic, This is Joy, Partnership in the Gospel. But just before I um, take us through that, just to remind ourselves, last Sunday, the third uh, part of this series, our last lesson, took us through Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. And the title was, This is Joy, Count Your Blessings. And it was based on the prayer of Paul as an introduction to the letter for the Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. And three things that... Um, we learned or were reminded from that text. Number one, celebrate God. God is the greatest blessing, the greatest gift that you have received in this life or we have received is God himself. And number two, celebrate God's people. Treasure the blessing of the relationships in your life. Invest in them. Enjoy them. That is what Paul is doing in as he writes to the Philippians, he is actually taking care of a very dear relationship and also celebrating a very dear relationship. And a reminder, take care, invest in the core relationships in your life. And number three, celebrate, the, celebrate God's fruit in your life. The fruit of salvation as we read in the word of God. Pursue the evidence of God's fruit in you. Because that is the greatest joy when we bear the fruit that brings glory to God. So our text today is Philippians chapter 1, verse 11 to 18. And our topic, this is joy, partnering in the gospel. Let's read the word of God. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result... It has become clear throughout the whole palace guard to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and they are all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy. Some preach Christ out of rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chain. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. The key highlights in that scripture, uh, the text that we have, um, we have read, Paul talks about advancing the gospel. Talks about advancing the gospel. He says the gospel is moving forward. That's what advancing is. The second thing that he raises there is the proclamation of the gospel. It is moving forward through the obedient efforts of the church, of the saints, partnering in the gospel, proclaiming it. And what is happening then? Christ is preached. He is our message. Two key lessons from that text that we learn and expound on today. Number one, the first lesson for us today. We have an unstoppable gospel. We have an unstoppable gospel. No human power 
or satanic opposition can stop the advance of the gospel. Remember that. No human power, no satanic opposition can stop the advance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you read Acts 23 all the way to 27, you realize that Paul is in prison in Rome because of the machinations and the workings of the Jewish religious leaders of the day and the political leaders of the Jews of the day. Now, these leaders who began the process that finally saw Paul as a prisoner in Rome wanted to stop the gospel story. That was everything. In fact, if you go back even before Paul uh, gave his life to Christ when he was still a persecutor of the church, they had warned the believers, Peter and John specifically, speak no more in this name. And now they want to stop Paul so that this gospel does not continue. But what happens? Instead, the story of Jesus is spreading even further and faster. The story of Jesus is spreading even further and faster. You see, Paul's imprisonment, as we have just read, becomes an opportunity for many people to hear the gospel, reaching even the palace. He talks about the palace guard, the guards that are, that, that are guarding him hearing the gospel. You see, Paul was at a house arrest, but he was chained to a soldier literally throughout. And the soldiers changed guard every six hours on a continuous basis. So you can imagine every six hours, there is a soldier who is going to come and hear this talkative, this preacher who does not want to, seek, uh, to keep quiet about the gospel. Everybody around him is hearing the gospel. Rome is hearing the gospel. Very likely, some of those soldiers gave their lives to Christ. And the gospel is growing in Rome. That Reminds us of what happened in Philippi when this church was planted by Paul. It's like a, a, a replica here. Because in those early days, Paul and Silas were in prison. What happened when they were in prison? As they were singing songs of praise in the night, the age of the Lord came and broke through. And you know the story. It is through the imprisonment of Paul and Silas that the jailer and his whole family were brought to the faith, and through them we believe many others. Friends, even in the most difficult circumstances, and in the most unlikely places, God will make a way for the gospel. God will make a way for the ministry. You know, when you look at the words we have read, the Greek word that um, is used to, uh, that is translated in English, advance, what we, what we read in our English Bibles as advance or progress. is actually a word, a military word, that is used for woodcutters that are clearing a forest ahead of an army so that the army can fight passage to conquer new ground. They go ahead of an advancing army. And what Paul is saying is that there is no forest that is starting before the gospel. Every forest is being leveled. The gospel is moving on. The gospel is breaking barriers and is unstoppable in every situation. We remember the words of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gospel cannot be stopped. You see, in this season of COVID-19, there are opportunities for the gospel. The gospel cannot be stopped. I know we have a lot of concerns about the closure of churches. And we would all, we all long for that day when we shall be back and be able to meet in church as we have always done. But listen, even in this season, there is an opportunity for the gospel. I have marveled at the opportunities that the Lord is opening for us as a church. Especially as we go through the Tumaini uh, basket uh, support for the needy. When the community leaders approached us to partner with the, the community in taking care of the most vulnerable families among us, we did not realize that the Lord was opening a door. When we went to do our survey over the families that were given by the community to um, help in supporting and we are doing that, 
two of our staff who went, you know, came up with a report that there is a mission field out there. It's a harvest field out there. Even in these seasons, God is opening doors for the gospel. As we lament about the lockdown, brothers and sisters, think about the church in places like China. The church in China, we are told, is growing very fast, even though it is largely banned and persecuted. And a lot of the church is underground, underground churches. Over 50 million people meeting in home churches. Because you can never stop the gospel. And the fact that we are going through the season that we are going through, it is important for us to be reminded that the gospel has not been stopped. And it cannot be stopped. The kingdom of God continues to advance and will continue to advance. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Human weakness. First of all, we have said no human power, no satanic power can stop the gospel. But let us also remind ourselves from this text that no human weakness can stop the gospel. No human weakness, not mine, not yours, can stop the advance of the kingdom of God. Not even the, or the, the, the weakness displayed among God's people who are charged with the responsibility of preaching the gospel. Paul says it is true that some people preach Christ out of envy and livery, out of selfish ambition, not sincerely. But the important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. Note, here there are people who are preaching the gospel. They are envious. They are contentious. They are full of competition. They are selfish. They are insincere. They are hypocrites. But that does not distract Paul from the gospel. It doesn't distract Paul from the gospel. What is Paul telling us? He said in the Philippians who he is writing to, do not concentrate on these who are doing it with evil motives. Do not fight the wrong battles. To the false preachers in Galatia, Paul called a curse. Do you remember that? Paul called a curse. The false preacher, the Galatian. And the Bible says, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. It looks like it is a double standard here. Because to the false preachers in, among the Galatians, he says, let them be accursed. But to the insincere, insincere, contentious preachers who preach the truth in Rome and elsewhere, Paul was more accommodating. He's not calling down a curse. What's happening here? This is what is happening. Paul is more disturbed when the gospel itself is defective. More than he is disturbed when the preachers of the gospel themselves are defective. Let me say that again. We should be disturbed more when the gospel itself is defective. When the doctrine is subverted. More than by the defectiveness of the messengers of the gospel. The message is obviously more important than the messenger. Paul's intention is not in any way to minimize the character of the preacher. Rather, it is to shift our eyes from the weakness of the messengers to the message of Christ and to Christ himself. Paul is not saying it doesn't matter whether you preach out of envy or however you do it because you will ultimately be answerable to your maker. The teachers will be judged with harsher judgment, the Bible says. So he's not giving us a license to preach from a defective character. But he is telling the Philippians and us, the message should be your focus. To be clear, we should emulate Paul. Right message, right messenger. 
remember this. It is not about us. It's about Christ. Another important point that Paul makes here is that we should celebrate the fruit. And this is, can look a bit controversial. We should celebrate the fruit of the message even when the messenger is unworthy. Christ is being preached. People are getting saved. I recently uh, ran into someone and um, she reminded me that uh, I used to preach to her at some point and in her high school days. And then I asked her, how are you doing? And she looks very excited about her faith. She seems to be doing well. But it also occurred that she had gone away from the faith at some point. But then she joined a certain church and she has come back to the faith. But when she mentioned the church, I felt like I would tell her something. But Paul is saying, even then, Christ is being preached. We celebrate the fruit of the message. But I want to reiterate again. It is not a license. Sometimes, you know, when you look at the, uh, our, our TV locally and uh, even internationally, and you look at what is happening in the church of Jesus Christ and some of the things we preach, some of the things that are said and the way we do things, sometimes it looks like there is no hope for the church. But what Paul is saying, even in the weakness of the church, because there are no perfect churches, even in the weakness of the messengers, the gospel shall continue. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the messengers of the gospel. And let's keep celebrating. So number one, Paul is reminding us through the text we have read, we have an unstoppable gospel. But secondly, and this reminds us of the theme that we've been following in church here at Grace Hill, God is raising an unstoppable army of witnesses. God is raising an unstoppable army of witnesses. Paul will show us here that the gospel advances through ordinary vessels. Through men and women like you and me. Through girls and boys. Through young and old. Paul says in verse 16 of our text today, I am put here for the defense of the gospel. I am put here for the defense of the gospel. And he says earlier on in a scripture we read last Sunday, Philippians chapter 1 verse 7, whether I am in chains or deferring the gospel, deferring and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. In other words, you are partner in the sharing of the gospel. You are also defenders and confirmers of the gospel. That's who you are. Paul sees his calling as the defense and confirmation of the gospel. He defends it through his preaching. He confirms it through his preaching and also through his lifestyle. But who is called to this high task? Especially gifted people like Paul or Ravi Zacharias who sadly passed on this week, one of the foremost defenders of the faith in our time and his legacy certainly will live on is it people like those that are called to be defenders of the gospel? No. The defense of the gospel is the calling of every believer. Every believer. The ordinary Philippians shared, the Bible says, in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. The New King James Version says, in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers with me of grace. You partake with me in this. Peter tells us, and I read from the New Living Translation, chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Being always ready to defend what you believe to anyone who asks the hope for which you believe. It is not about the Pauls, the pastors, those theologians, you are a defender, a confirmer of the gospel. You are a witness. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9, remember we read that last Sunday. That is, that's why we must keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. 
Because you cannot defend or explain what you do not know, what you do not believe, what you do not understand. But we are all witnesses. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, and I believe you know it, and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. It is every one of us. My friends, the gospel advances through ordinary witnesses. In fact, the Bible says, God has ordained Praise in the mouth of children. It is everyone, the young, the old, every believer. But then, the gospel advances through intentional witness. Because you can be, we are ordinary vessels. But unless we rise to take up the challenge of being witnesses of the gospel, intentionally, then the gospel will not advance. We heed of the gospel. The gospel advances through the intentional witness of those who believe in it. Verse 14. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and they are all the more, not that, all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Paul modeled intentional witnessing. He is in jail, but he is still sharing the faith. First Corinthians chapter 9. I have become all things to all men, so that I may win some to Christ. Those without the law, like one without the law. To the, to the Gentile, like a Gentile. To the Jew, like a Jew. And now we can see also the brethren with him displayed the same intentionality. They dare. How did they dare to speak the gospel? The Bible says all the more. Meaning in an increasing way. The way they shared the gospel today, you know, they increased the following day. They shared more. They shared more. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I know some of us would look at this season and find that there are very few opportunities to share the gospel. But as I said, there are opportunities every moment to share the gospel. And this season two shall come to pass. That's who you are. A witness. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Paul modeled intentional witnessing. And the disciples here modeled intentional witnessing too. Now, intentional witness, as we read the scriptures here, is bold. Intentional witness is bold. Very bold indeed. Most of the brothers and sisters dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Bold. You know what that means? Daring. Bold. Once you have decided, once you are intentional, you are bold. If you are not intentional, fear consumes you. Years ago, I found myself in a taxi and I needed to get from point one to point two. And so from somewhere in Westlands, I took a cab. And uh, as I moved on, the, the, the cab driver began giving me his stories. You know, he began giving me his, um, the cab driver give, uh, began telling me about his car. Oh, this car is great. I love it. It has really served me. This car has given me enough money to educate my children. Even one of them is in the university. He told me all those stories. But when we were just about to get to our destination, I was very quiet. He asked me the question. I have told you about myself. So the question is, and what? And what? You know, the question is, and what do you do yourself. What do you do? I am informed that uh, it was fake news about Ravi Zakaria's uh, uh, death. It's been all over in the media. Thanks for that, uh, uh, for that uh, correction. Thank you for that correction. Now, intentional witness is bold. 
So this man asked me, what do you do? And I told him, I am a pastor. I'm a preacher of the gospel. He said, are you proud of what you do? I said, yes, I am proud of what I do. Are you proud? And I said, yes, I am. He told me, I don't believe you. How can we be in the same car? And I have told you about my taxi, which is really nothing. And you tell me that you speak about life and you cannot share with me? Do you know whether I'm going to hell, whether I'm lost? And that old man, you know, fixed me, just fixed me. And he told me, I hope if you are serious about it, if you get another opportunity, you will share the gospel. I didn't ask him whether he is born again because he, 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 he was talking until the time I left the car. He looked very annoyed with me. I guess he must have been a Christian. But you see, I wasn't intentional. It is only when there is intentionality, there is a boldness that is given by the Holy Spirit. When you say, I will talk to my neighbor. I will talk to my friend. I will do a post on my Facebook or my, on WhatsApp that will share with my family members and friends the love of Jesus Christ. Intentional witness is bold. So do not be ashamed of the testimony and about our Lord Jesus Christ or about me, a prisoner, his prisoner. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 8, Paul says, Intentional witness, brothers and sisters, is a lifestyle. It is not something we do during a missionary week. It is not something we do like Gracil, we have mission work in different places in Somalia. We have mission programs. We have, we have programs. That is not when we do our witnessing. Intentional witness is a lifestyle. The Greek word that is used in Philippians chapter 1 verse 14 for the word proclaim. It does not refer principally to the act of preaching. But rather to everyday conversation. The Greek word that proclaim, it is, you know, there, it, it has two meanings. There is the word for preaching, shouting. But the word that Paul deliberately uses here is not a word that refers to preaching. It is a word that refers to everyday conversation. And he is saying that people around him are spreading the gospel through everyday Everyday conversation. Everyday conversation. The gospel was on their tongues. Part of their daily conversation was the gospel. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6 says, Let your conversation be always full of grace. Seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. That you may use this opportunity. That your conversation should carry the grace of God. Should carry the message of the cross. It should be seasoned with the salt of the gospel. So that you may know in every situation how to be an ambassador of the gospel. Paul is saying, for the people around me, that's what they are doing. Their daily conversation is gospel. Finally, brothers and sisters... Intentional witness is contagious. Intentional witness is contagious. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters, I'm really concentrating on verse 14, have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. When Paul dared, the rest followed his example. They also dared. May the Lord make us influencers. By making us a people who dare as far as the gospel, the witness of the gospel is concerned. Just like COVID-19 is contagious. That's why we are hiding away from it. May we be a contagious epicenter where the joy of the gospel is real and intentional. Where the witness of the gospel is intentional and a lifestyle. May grace heal. May the other local churches all around us and in this nation and elsewhere become contagious centers for the, in, uh, for the virus of witnessing. You see, I learned wit witnessing in, in campus. 
I had done it in high school, but I learned it in campus in the 19, uh, late 80s. When I got into first year back in 1988, one of the things that happened is that I found that people that were so intentional about telling others about Jesus Christ, about going back to where they are born, to their districts those days, to go and share the gospel. It became contagious. I learned because of them. Because I dared, Paul says, they also dared. And I pray that we may become a contagious people as far as the sharing of the gospel is concerned. So, brothers and sisters, we have an unstoppable gospel. This gospel cannot be stopped by human power or satanic opposition. The gospel, the kingdom will continue advancing. Hallelujah. Human weakness, because churches have weaknesses, preachers have weaknesses, cannot stop the gospel. We have an unstoppable gospel in the name of Jesus. After this is done, I believe we'll be surprised at the many people who will have come to faith in the lockdown. Even in this neighborhood, a lot of people who will have come to faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, God is building an unstoppable army of witnesses. May I be in that army. May you be part of that army. Let the gospel advance through an ordinary vessel like you. Let the gospel advance through an intentional witness like you. May we be intentional in our witnessing. Intentional in our sharing the faith. Carry a track when you have an opportunity. Give it out. Share your testimony. Invite somebody to hear the word of God. Share a link. Be intentional. Pray for somebody. Because those you pray for, you are also able to share with them. Pray for your relatives who don't know the Lord. Pray for your neighbors. And may the Lord give you an opportunity to share the gospel. I want to invite you for prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. For we are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. For the salvation of everyone who believes. Everyone. From the Jew to the Gentile. Everyone. Born of woman. And how we pray that you bring many people to the point of believing. But how shall they hear? Unless someone is sent to preach to them. Unless someone preaches to them. How beautiful are the feet of those who publish the good news of the kingdom of God. I pray in the name of the Lord that this unstoppable gospel is going to find a place in the unstoppable army that you are raising among us. In the church of Jesus Christ in this nation. In the church of Jesus Christ in this season. I pray that you may raise an unstoppable army. Lord, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit that we may receive that anointing, that power that gives us the boldness to be witnesses of the cross. I pray for we have not received a spirit of fear, but we have received a spirit of power, of love and of a sound mind that we may not be ashamed of the witness of the gospel. I pray in the name of the Lord that the power of the Holy Spirit would raise in us a new commitment. Father, forgive us for the times we have covered the light with a bowl, with a cloth, with a bushel, where we have covered the light and put it under the bed. For we are the light of the world, a light set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Oh God Almighty, would you make an intentional decision and ask the Lord, make me an intentional witness. Fill me with your grace and with the power of the Holy Spirit. I will share your love at every opportunity. I will begin where I am in my Jerusalem. But wherever you place me, I will be your witness. Whether in prison or in freedom, along the way, when I'm going out or coming in, make me an intentional witness. 
Make me a contagious witness. Lord, I pray for Grace Hill. May you bring us again to that place and to that point where we truly, truly are committed to the Great Commission. May you make us again a contagious center for the sharing of the gospel. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, why don't you ask him to come into your heart? That is what we are talking about today, the gospel, the good news, that Jesus came, was born, he lived, he died on the cross for you, he rose again for you. Why don't you tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life, save me, wash me, make me a partaker of the gospel. I will follow you all the days of my life. I choose you today in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, look out for a brother or a sister next to you. On our screen also, there is a number you can call for encouragement. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless your people. May you bless us in our going out and bless us in our coming in. May your face shine upon us, O oh God. May you give us health. May you provide our food and provide our waters, O oh God. I pray that you keep us healthy even in this pandemic. We pray for our nation and the nations of the world that you continuously watch over us and indeed give us healing and give us a solution that we may return to a, a normal life. Father, I pray for your people that there will be witnesses wherever you place them, that the gospel will not be stopped even in these times that are difficult, that the story of the gospel shall continue to grow. I pray for the children, I pray for the youth, I pray for the young people, I pray for the parents, I pray for everyone that, oh Lord, we shall know the fullness of your blessing this week. And in Jesus' name, you are blessed in every way. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May you enjoy his grace. Amen.